Oh, I think this is what we're Yeah, it's on. Mm -hmm. This is my PWOC rock for our program day. We got to decorate a rock. My rock says, do not be afraid from Matthew 10, 28. Can somebody read that? Let's get started today. Matthew 10, 28. Uh, so, thanks for joining us today. Today is Monday over here in Korea. It is noon. Actually, it's a little bit of afternoon because you know I like to be late. <laughs> I don't like to be late. It's just I keep being and at least five minutes late. All right, Matthew 10, 28. What is and it? do not, not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the, body. Body. Can kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Yes, okay. When you read today, which you will be reading at... Um, Several points today. I would like you to read with clarity and enunciation and projection of your voice out into the world, right? Because you're broadcasting to the world a message of hope in, this, in these times. That is the whole purpose of these Bible time and worship um, messages with you all. Um, as uh, to, It's their week six of online schooling here in... Daegu, Korea, and um, we've been going through this a bit longer than probably you who are tuning in. And um, each day, though, uh, of their school day, we've um, met, if God allowed, we've met uh, to just be intentional about this time that we would, in the midst of everything that is going on, that we would make sure to continue to um, be spiritually fed through the reading of his word, through meeting together as his body in prayer uh, and, and just discussion. So this is what you guys are seeing through the videos, but we also talk about the Lord throughout our day um, as he comes up. He's a part of our day. He's a part of my day, so I try to make him a part of the children's day. Uh, that might not be what they're thinking about first thing in their minds, but it's my job, I think, as a mom, having uh been uh in, you know entrusted with this message and this hope to share it with the people around me and right now the people around me are my children and since we live in a time that has internet access it's also with you too so i praise it and it is encouraging to you please let us know tell us hello that you're here and um i just love to connect with you uh later and uh just be with you all right so what's the plan for today today's plan is i was thinking to start off this week talking about something that i came across in my uh this 10-day devotional that i got invited to on you version through some friends i think these are children of friends that i knew um back when we were stationed in uh, uh jblm in washington state um someone invited me to do the good fight it's a devotional called the good fight and i like this devotional on you version or bible.com because uh it just has several passages in there that remind me of god's truth so i'm trying to remind other people of god's truth but every now and then i do get overwhelmed with the things of that of the day the things that are surrounding me the news reports um, social media feeds, you know, my own thoughts, right? They get in my way sometimes. And through just doing this devotional with other people and just seeing the scriptures that are there to remind us that we are in a, a fight. This is the good fight and we need to be ready. So I have a message um, that I kind of thought about that sprang off of one of these days and some things that were going on in our life. So we're going to kind of talk about that, talk about that through the reading of God's word, through um, a, a time of, of worship and prayer. So uh, we're going to start off with worship today to just prepare our minds and get ready for the, the message um, through, uh, you know, just thinking about God, what do you want me to say today? And uh, this is what we got. And I pray it's encouraging to you and to you who are listening. You guys got anything to say about the day? How's I it have going? a lot of homework. You have a lot of homework. It, it's Monday. You don't have to do everything today. No, I have a lot of things assigned today. 
to do today? Okay. All right. I don't know. Maybe they just want to, you know, it's the end of the grading period this week. So it might be that they're trying to get some things in. Um, and if it's for one of your key classes, that's kind of grades are kind of low, then the more opportunities that you get to, to do more assignments and do well on them, it will There's help nothing to improve that. your grade. Oh, well. Oh, well. <laughs> Caleb, what mm -hmm. have you been up to? I know you got up early again so that you can get started with your day and hopefully you're looking forward to playing your video games that you look forward to doing every day mm -hmm. with your free time after you get done with the things you need to do. But I saw that you didn't have much to do today. What's up with that? Uh, I had a test which I completed and then I was basically it. There was the other daily things that I was going to do but besides that that's basically it what happened to the other daily things that you normally do no the daily things for the b-day which i also did oh i mean there's really you know there's really you know you have to complete this by this time on that so it's at your own pace okay and then uh, because today wasn't an a day uh a days is when i get a lot of work okay Yes, the school system here, the, the middle high school that they go to, has an A, B day schedule. So half their classes on, on, are on one day and other classes are on the other day. Uh, Madeline, so what are you doing right now? Okay, what are we doing right now? I see you cutting, folding, and doing lots of things. Done. That has, okay. He's getting rid of his piece. Oh, you are? Okay. Good. I want to be intentional with this time that we have right now. I want to, I want to clear, try and clear out all the other distractions and focus on this message right now. Because at the end, I'm going to ask you what is, just summarize something that the takeaway, the key key thing from whatever everything that we have done at this for this hour. Summarize the key thing and tell us what what it will be. You had a 30 second opportunity to, to share a summary. I would like to know what it is at the end of it, what stood out to you. Okay, we come with expectation that that we will learn some, either learn something new about the Lord or be reminded of what he has said that we can hold on to for the day or for the week or for the moment. Or um, just just to just escape the circumstances of the world and to look beyond now here and now to eternity and to just grab a hold of that again. That is what I hope to get from this time um, as we meet together today. All right. So as we get started, let's sing this song. It's an old song called "God of Wonders," right? I like this song because uh, it reminds us, the lyrics of this song reminds us that God is holy. You are holy. You are holy. And we ask, precious Lord, please reveal your heart to me. Father, hold me, hold me, right? Um, I don't come here thinking that I know everything or that I got it all together. If you'll see, as you look through all the Bible time and worship videos our mood and enthusiasm and energy goes up and down because we're people um, but the truth of the matter has always been firmly rooted in in the Lord and what he has said and I, I hold on to that that's that's what I got that's my hope so I pray that we will be reminded of these things today all right, so we'll pray a little bit um, at the end of the songs before we get into his word. But first, let's let's go in the song, and I pray that this time would uh, just help us to focus on the Lord.
we thank you that you, you are God alone. And right now, like the lyrics said, and right now in the good times and in the bad, you are on your throne and you are God alone. Lord, help us to hold fast to this truth. I am talking to those that know you, those who proclaim your glory in word and deed. Lord, be with us today at this time um, as iron sharpening iron joined through your Holy Spirit, God. Give us your understanding. Help us to know and to feel your presence. Lord, you are here with us. You did not leave us here alone. You sent us the helper. Lord, I am thankful, God, in what you have done, what you have already done, what you are doing now, and what you will do. Lord, I thank you, God. Lord, help us to hold fast. Again, help us to hold fast to these truths and to be the light in this dark time that we are in right now. Lord, I just thank you for the peace that you have given myself and our family during this time, God. Um, this peace that surpasses all understanding, even in a time of trial and of crisis and of just not knowing what the future may hold, God. I have peace in you because I know ultimately what will happen. Lord, your word says that you will indeed return and that um, unless that happens first, God, either way, I will be with you for eternity. And I, I'm, I, that's where I place my hope. You are my living hope. And I'm just so thankful for that, God. I pray, Lord, that you'll be with me as we uh, read some passages from your word. I pray, God, that uh, you would give understanding to the listener and even to me, God, as I think about sharing what, what you've shown me and what I've thought about because I... I, I desire to know you and I desire to um, help people to, you know, just encourage one another and even more as the day is drawing near, as it says in Hebrews 10, 23 to 25, God. And I just lift up this time to you and I'm, I'm just thankful for what you allow us to do. Amen. All right. So... Uh, I think the title of this is going to be, It Starts in the Mind. I kind of talked to you guys about this before, um, or I talked to you, Caleb, a little bit about this. But first, let's turn to Philippians 4, 11 through 13. Um, Caleb, can you read that? And Madeline, can you prepare at 16, 25 to 40? That'll be where the bulk of the message today comes from. We do have some supplementary verses. All of this will be put in a blog on sojournashines.com where I kind of uh, list all the links so that you, just to make it super easy for anyone that comes across it to be able to go straight to God's word, read it for yourself, and see what the Lord has to say to you today. So Philippians 4, 11 through 13, what does that say? This is Paul talking. Not that I speak in regard to me, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Nevertheless, you have done well that you have shared my distress. Okay, what is Paul saying in that passage, Caleb? Um, What's the key in there? I like to... I can be content. Right. Be content. Okay. I know why you're making that noise. Why Why? Why do you uh, frown at that phrase, be content? Have you heard that phrase before? Yes. Yeah, why? Because you put that as my username for everything. Why did single... I do that, though? <coughs> I forgot. Oh, conveniently, Coffee you forgot. You forgot? 
Malin. Words matter. They matter. Um, all right, I just want you to keep that passage in mind. Philippians 4, 11 through 13, Paul says in any situation, he has learned how to be content. So the, here's the bulk of the message. Let's talk about, uh, let's read together as Madeline reads Acts 16, 25 through 40. We're going to stop a couple, this probably a couple of times as we read through that because I just want to point out something. In Acts 16, uh, 25 through 40. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, so the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were loosed. Okay, hold on a second. Okay, I'd like you to read a little louder. But first, let's talk about where is Paul and Silas located right now? Where are they? Prison. They're in prison, right? We just read how Paul said in any situation he's learned how to be content, right? He hasn't oh, always... Is it this passage? Huh? Is it this passage? So we, we haven't always... He hasn't always had everything where it's great. In fact, if you read about Paul, which he's... I mean, he's, he's written most of the New Testament. You can see that he's been in a variety of situations, right? And uh, this is just one of them. He was in jail, but what was he doing while he was sitting in jail? Huh? Okay, don't whisper. Talk. Singing. He was singing, according to verse 25. What else was he doing? Okay, read verse, read, start over again and read verse 25. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praising and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Okay, verse 25, what were they doing, Paul and Silas? Praising. Praising. And singing. And singing hymns to God in jail. Who was listening? The prisoners. It says in verse 25, the prisoners were listening to them. So even in the situation, I don't know, who wants to be in jail? I, you know, nobody, well, most people don't want to be in jail. They were in jail, and yet even though they were in jail, and by the way, if you read before verse 25, you can see why they went to jail. Uh, you can see why they went to jail. So they were thrown in jail. And yet, while they were in there, they were praying and singing hymns to God, and people were listening. Let's see what happened, though. Even while they were in this unexpected, undesirable situation, even while they were, even though they were in that situation, they still praised the Lord. And let's see what happened because of their actions. Continue reading. Verse 26. Suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all of the doors were open and everyone's chains were loosed. And the keeper of the prison awaking from sleep and seeing the prison doors open, supposing the prisoners had fled, drew his sword and was, and was about to kill himself. But Paul... Okay, hold on. Why was the jailer who was supposed to be watching them about to kill himself in verse 27? Because he was going to be killed if the prisoners escaped. Right. He knew that if his, if, if his job, if, he, if his boss came down and his job was to guard the prisoners and all the prisoners were gone, he knew that he was a dead man, basically, so... He was about to kill himself. The Romans did not play. They were experts, known to be experts at torturing people, right? And uh, and we know that even more so uh, because of what they eventually did. No, this is afterwards. 
Oh, what they already did then. Thank you, Caleb. What they already did to Jesus himself and others. It's just what they did. Um, uh, actually, you know what's so interesting? As soon as we will be talking about Good Friday, actually the week leading up to Jesus' sacrifice of himself upon the cross and then the resurrection three days later where you know the tomb is empty and he comes and spends time with uh, the disciples and other people before he ascended into heaven like we're about to enter into re the remembering of that time uh, which is um, pretty exciting okay but going back so now the jailer woke when he awoke I guess he was sleeping when the jailer awoke and saw that the prison doors were open, he started to kill his like, oh my goodness, I, that, they've all escaped. But what happens, verse 28? But Paul called with a loud voice, saying, Do yourself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light, ran in, and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? So they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household. And they spoke the word of the Lord to him, and to all who were in his house. Okay, wait a minute. Why, all of a sudden, did this jailer, whose job it was to guard the prisoners, why now is he asking Paul, what must I do to be saved? I mean, why do you think he's asking that to Paul? Because he didn't leave. Yeah, Paul didn't leave. Right? I mean, if you're in jail and suddenly your an earthquake happens and every everyone is free, the, like now's your chance to escape. But he realized something's different about Paul and all these people because they did not escape. They stood. They sat right there and just waited. Amazing. Like if they had an opportunity for freedom, but they didn't want freedom like that. God was using them in a mighty way. Did the other prisoners leave? Well, it doesn't say here that they did. Let's keep reading them. The jailer would be killed in. If the other prisoners left? Right, so maybe they didn't leave because he's not killed. But we haven't gotten that far. Let's keep reading and you'll see what happened to him. So he asked Paul, what must I do to be saved? Paul said, verse 31, believe in, actually it wasn't just Paul, it says, and they said, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. And they spoke the word of the Lord to him and all who were in the house. Right? So it's not just like it's not just like me by the way this verse right here can seem confusing if you think that verse 31 says if i believe as maybe one of the leaders in our household right and my kids are here if i believe in jesus then i will be saved and so will they automatically because i i believe that's not what it's saying here it's not what it's saying each person has to make their own choice look at verse 32 uh, and this, it kind of explains what happened. Verse 32, and they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. They were all listening to the word of the Lord and they all came to believe and know that Jesus Christ is Lord. So it wasn't just automatically, I believe, so everybody in my house believes. No, they all had the opportunity to hear the word of the Lord and they all responded by the grace of God and just that's amazing I mean we want I want those that I care about and love especially I want them to know the Lord but but I can't do it for them I can only I can only maybe have some sort of influence over the environment that they're in so that they may hear the word of the Lord and then have a chance to respond so I can't tell my kids what to believe, but I can certainly control the environment a little bit where we are having Bible time together. And so we will talk about the Lord and read what he has to say. And I will plead with God and pray to God, God, would you affect their heart 
And would you cause understanding to happen in their heart and in their mind in such a way that they will want to respond in obedience? I mean, that, that's what I can do is pr make the environment. But God, God's the one that does the work with the person, and the person has to make their own choice. Um, so, uh, but you didn't, we didn't ask your question, Madeline, about what happened to the jailer. So let's keep going here. Um, verse 33. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes. And immediately he and all his family were baptized. Now when he had brought them into his house, he set food before them and he rejoiced, having believed in God with all his household. Okay, who's this that's done all this, that's washed their wounds, that received baptism, um, and that fed all the of jailer. these people? The jailer, right? You can tell that he was definitely changed because just look at his actions. Caring for these prisoners, he's now feeding them. He's now cleansing, cleansing them and inviting them into his home um, to feed them and take care of them. So, verse 35, let's see what happens, though, with the jailer. Because that was all kind of happened at night. Let's see what happens, though, during the day. Verse 35. And when it was day, the magistrates sent the officers, saying, Let those men go. So the keeper of the prison reported these words to the ball, saying, The magistrates have sent to let you go. Now, therefore, depart and go in peace. But all right, hold on right there. So, right there, Madeline, that should answer your question. Right? Uh, the jailer wasn't accused of, you know, losing prisoners or anything. In fact, you know, they're telling him to let them go. Uh, but, so, the jailer telling Paul, hey, good, great news, right? They said that you can leave, officially. You can go. So, Paul should be happy, right? I mean, he's thrown in jail. Now they're saying he can leave. But let's see what Paul does, though. This is interesting because he's holding on. He's not looking at this circumstance right now. He's 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 thinking about a lot of things here. So let's see what happens in verse 37. But Paul said to them, They have beaten us openly, uncondemned Roman, and have thrown us into prison. And now do they put us out secretly? No, indeed. Let them calm themselves and get us out. And the officers told these that. words. And the officers told these words to the magistrates, and they were afraid when they had heard that they were Romans. Then they came and pleaded with them and brought them out and asked them to depart from the city. So they went out of the prison and entered the house of Lydia. And when they had seen the brethren, they encouraged them and departed. All right. So it says right there, um, Paul didn't go out. When they said, okay, now you're free, you can go, why, Caleb? He was a Roman citizen, and at that time, I guess that Roman citizens could not be put into Roman jail without a trial. Yeah, they had a so, certain way to do things, and they did not when follow they it. threw them into jail by not following that, and then now they're trying to take them out secretly. Paul was not happy about that, so he wanted... Something else. He wanted what? He wanted them to come into him personally. Yeah, come to personally and apologize. Verse 37. Paul said, They have beaten us publicly, uncondemned men who are Roman citizens and thrown us into prison. It sounds like he was not, that was an that was, uh, uh, unjust thing that has happened to them, that they were thrown into prison. So going back, remember, so this, this happened to them not because they deserved it. He's saying that they didn't follow a protocol. They threw them in the jail and, and, and beating us publicly, uncondemned men who are Roman citizens and thrown us into prison in secret. So he's saying all of these things have happened. Certainly doesn't sound like something that was a consequence, like something that they expected to happen because maybe they had wrong behavior or, or no, said sounds like they were treated unfairly or unjustly. They were treated this way. But did that affect their attitude while they were in prison? No, it didn't. 
Because if we go back to the very beginning, verse 25, it said, they were praying and singing hymns to God. It didn't affect their attitude in prison. They were still praying and singing hymns to God, even in this unjust situation that they were in. So, my point is, it starts in the mind. What are you thinking about? What's your posture? What's your attitude towards your situation and towards the Lord? It shouldn't change because the circumstances are, you know, unexpected or unjust or, you know, you, you didn't do anything to deserve it. It, it, it doesn't matter. Remember, Paul said in Philippians 4, 11 through 13, he knew how to be content. He had learned how to be content in all situations because God is God, right? That's a paraphrase. Read Philippians 4, 11 through 13. Now, I would like to give you two verses, two verses kind of like to focus on during this time. Caleb, read Romans 12, 2. And Madeline reads Second Corinthians ten five. B. When I say B, that means the last part of five. But if you don't understand that, just read the whole verse. Second Corinthians ten five and Romans twelve two. So how do you keep a mind that is set on the right things, focused on the right things? Like Paul and Silas. They could have dwelled they could have let their mind dwell on the fact that I've been thrown in jail unjustly and, you know, how long are we going to be in here? Are they going to feed us and protect us? Does anyone else know that we're like lots of things he could have been thinking about and dwelling on? But instead, it says in verse 25, at midnight, they were not just one person, but they, Paul and Silas, were praying and singing hymns to God. That says something about community too, right? It's it's easier to um, what, it, what it, there's that verse about uh, a chord is stronger where there's two, two or more. You know, so I'll have to. Do you know that verse about um, a chord is not easily broken when you have more than just one, right? Of course, I'm with the Lord, but it's even more encouraging when we are with other believers iron sharpening iron right i love that hebrews 10 23 25 verse right well uh, encouraging one another and all the more as we see the day drawing near that's what this is right here right now all right so here's some two verses that you can that i once i thought about this these verses have like kind of uh repeated itself i've repeated it in my mind as i went on Romans 12, 2, what does it say? And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Right? How can we be transformed by the renewing of our mind? How, how can you be transformed by the renewing of your mind? How can you renew your mind? Repent. What is, what does repenting do? What is repenting? Um to put away your sin. To ask for forgiveness. Yeah. Repenting is the process of first acknowledging that you've done something wrong and and not wanting to continue to do that wrong thing again a turning away from the from the sin or the wrong that you have done whatever is not pleasing to the lord or recognizing it and want and the t desire to turn away that's repenting a confessing before god and saying i do not want to do this anymore lord forgive me help me to turn away from this so, uh, being transformed by the renewing of your mind, I guess you're right, should start with first the right sleep, you know, like, hey, uh, acknowledging where we've fallen short and where we need the Lord. But the renewing of our mind, 
with the has to come from the word of God. The truth that doesn't change. The Lord doesn't change, but our feelings do. Our attitudes can change. But the word of the Lord and the Lord himself does not change. So we go to him and let him transform our mind by us choosing to focus on the Lord and what he has said and what he has done. So that's how you are transformed and renewed in your mind. So, Caleb, again, Romans 12, 2, what does it say again? And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect the will of God. All right. Romans 12, 2 is a verse to maybe remember, paraphrase it in your own words, and, re- and think of that. Madeline, read 2 Corinthians 10, 5. That's also another verse that you can use. Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Bring every thought into captivity to captivity to the obedience of Christ. I'm going to read that in ESV translation. 2 Corinthians 10, 5 here says, We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. We take every thought captive to obey Christ. If you think about prisoners of war, right, you're in a war time, you see the enemy running around, you capture the enemy, and you and you you get a hold of him so that they obey whatever it is that you're trying to tell him to do. So our thoughts, right, run around all over the place. Don't let your thoughts have its way to ruminate and think about whatever it wants to, because that is not a good thing. It's not a good thing for it to just go on and on, especially at a time like this. Because it can go on and on and on in ways that are not helpful to you or to the people around you. Remember Paul and Silas. What happened to them in the jail as we read in Acts. Their actions mattered greatly. The people around him needed them to stay focused. They were the one that held the message. We hold the message. We who know Christ. It's important that we don't we we stay focused and that we stay in the game. It starts in the mind. Let us choose to dwell on the things of the Lord. 2 Corinthians 10:5 again, it says, "We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ." We take every thought captive to obey Christ. Is there a thought in your mind that you think about, oh, you know what? I don't know how long this is going to last. This this is horrible. This is terrible. I'm losing everything. There's really no point. Those thoughts are not captive to Christ. If they were, if they were, if they were, then how does that compare to uh, God being in control? How do these thoughts compare to the fact that this earth is not our home? This is temporary. How does that compare to, you know, uh, uh, us giving the Lord all of our... God says, cast all your burdens on me. Like, are, are we doing these things? We're not. We have to take our thoughts captive and make it bow to Jesus. Again, this is a thought that um, came out of the Good Fight 10-Day Devotional on version or Bible.com. And it was, it was saying in the devotional that your thoughts must bow to God's word. We are in a war, a good fight. That's the name of the devotional, the good fight. We need to capture our thoughts and cause them to yield to Jesus. Don't let your thoughts run rampant. rampant. 2 Corinthians 10, 5b. 
we take every thought captive to obey Christ. If you have a thought in there that you're letting think and dwell and just kind of grow, you might start to think that that thought is the truth. But is it? We have to go back to the word of the Lord. We are not to be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of our mind according to Romans 12.2. All right, so lastly, I'll leave you with this thought here. Uh, Malin, be ready to read 1 Peter 5, 6 through 11 as our closing passage. 1 Peter 5, 6 through 11. But I want to tell you that lately, because we've been here in the house for a little over six weeks now, so um, we've been watching lots of movies. So You can bring up Batman. Yes, I am. So, like I said, it all starts in the mind. We need to have the right posture, the right thinking. So, yes, as I said to Caleb, I already told him this thought that I had with... Um, so, we just watched Batman 3. And if you, I don't want to spoil the movie in case you haven't seen it or anything. But there's this point in the movie, and in fact, in all, all of these movies, right? There's a point where in Batman 3 and, and The Great Debaters, which is something that we watched, um, even in this uh, movie set in Uganda that's based on a true story, The Queen of Katwe. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing the city name correct but it's about a chess champion so in all of those situations they all have something in common and that is their mind like they were battling against their own selves in their mind their mind was holding them back specifically in batman 3 for example uh, what's his name? The not Batman's real name. The Bruce guy. Wayne. Bruce Wayne. I, I keep not know that. I don't know. It's it just, anyway, Bruce Wayne, right? Stuck in a pit, right? The pit of no hope, right? Because people try and they fail, and it's just like ugh. So he's stuck in the pit, and he tries to go up. You're spoiling the movie. I think it's been out a while, hasn't it? Yes. Okay. So anyway, the 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 old man, blind guy wise man tells him what's holding you back is your own mind the way you're thinking about it is holding you back and in the great debaters they saw this is an old movie based on a true story also about racism so they saw pure evil as they saw people lynched and hung and burned to death people simply because of the of the color of their skin and when, when faced with that evil and injustice, they, when they saw it, they, they just, uh, they were affected in their mind. And I remember the, the young debater saying, what's the point of all this? What's, what's the point of going and doing these debates and stuff when, when this could happen to me and it's happening, it's happening. And, the, and so, because his mind was starting to think about the situation at hand and the circumstances of what was surrounding him. So, but the other guy said, we know, not from you. We need you to have the hope. And that's what people need from us as Christ followers. We need to have and display the hope that is in us, put there by our trust and faith in the Lord God Almighty. Like, this situation is temporary and it will pass. It starts in the mind. What are you thinking about? From what posture are you coming at this from? Because it matters greatly to the people around you. They need you to be in the game. Just like great sports athletes. They have to visualize the victory in order to fully make it. The victory, we have victory in Christ Jesus. He's already, he's already won. The battle is, all, look, read the end of the story. The battle is already won. Whose side are you on? Remember these things. It matters. It is important. John 16, 33 says, In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Jesus Christ says that. There's another verse that you can remember and hold on to. You will have trouble, but take heart. 
Christ has overcome the world. And if you are his, you are not alone. All right. Last thoughts from the word of God. Madeline, read uh, 1 Peter 5, 6 through 11. I told you you were going to read that. Yeah, but I closed it. Right, and while she's looking for it again, 2 Timothy 1, 7, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of what? Do you guys know? What? God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of what? Hope. This... Courage. Joy. Oh, uh, see, this is, this, is, this, is, this is why we have to read God's word over and over again because we forget there's too much going on today. You must be in his word so that it can be there when you need it. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, I said it. and what? Courage. Self-control. Self-control. Choose what your mind will dwell on and think about. It starts in the mind. People need you to be ready and present and in the game. Sing songs and praises just like Paul and Silas as they were in jail. You never know who's listening. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood who called us to uh, experience by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. To him be the dominion and glory forever and ever. Amen. Last song, because I, I actually we should end here, but I want to sing a song um, just to tie this all together. I mean, it's all, all to the Lord and all to the glory of God. But I tell you what, this is amazing grace that he came and gave himself for us that we may have an opportunity to be in right relationship with him, right? And to have the hope that transcends all under all human understanding right we cannot have that without the lord doing what he did and so for that i am just so thankful all right so uh the last thought we'll do is to sing this song called this this is amazing grace all right so before we do that though caleb can you pray and then we'll sing the song, This is Amazing Grace to Close. Dear Lord, I thank you for this day. I pray for the people in the U.S. that they will be able to deal with their situation like we did here in Korea. Amen.
chaos back into order. Who brings our chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan a son and daughter? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who rules the nations? thinking about the lyrics of this song and one of the lines said um, that you would lay down your life that I would be set free and Lord I know that you set us free from eternal damnation and separation from you you set us free from that God when we choose to believe in you but you also set us free from just dwelling on the circumstances of the day and not living with any hope. You set us free from that, God, because when we have a true picture of you and we have a true relationship with you and we know what you have done for us, God, that it is sets us free from living a life today without joy, without hope. We can't have hope. We can have joy. We can have peace, true peace, because we know that ultimately this is not our home. We are with you now, right now. It doesn't matter the situation. Just like Paul said in Philippians 4, Lord, it does not matter the situation. We are content in you. We are content in you. 
so that even if un, in, we are placed in unjust circumstances or what we feel like is unjust circumstances, like Paul and Silas when they were thrown in jail, God, we can still have a mindset like they did of just focus, a focus on you, where we are just so in tune with you that we are singing hymns and praising you praying to you focus on you and your truth despite the situation so much so that you use us god to bring others into your kingdom lord their actions sincerely mattered and they affected a whole household and who knows how many others god and who knows who that household then affected we have a job to do we who know you i pray god that you would remind us that you have given us not a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of self-control god self-control and the help through your holy spirit the helper to help us to be reminded of your truths god that we can cast all our burdens on you because you care for us lord and i pray lord that we would hold on to what we know in the times that of, of living in a time of where we don't know what the future may hold. And to be honest, we never knew what the future held anyway. We just acted like we did. So Lord, we acknowledge God where we have fallen away from your truth. Lord, I repent of my desire to live a life apart from you. God, I want to be back in relationship with you abiding in you god help me help us to do this lord we need you and we thank you for this time i pray god it is encouraging to the listener as iron sharpening iron may we continue to meet together if even online lord may we continue to meet together and encourage one another even more as we see the day approaching that no, and no matter what circumstance whatever circumstance that we are in we may choose to praise your holy name because you are still on a throne and you are still god and i thank you god for that and it's in your son jesus christ's name that i pray these things amen amen is amazing